Welcome back to the Hot Tip Bets Daily Show for Thursday, April 15th. Um, and yeah, that statement might not be totally factually, and it hasn't been the daily show here for the last week or so, since the College Basketball National Championship anyway, but I'm looking to get back a little bit into that, getting into the MLB season here a little bit more, catching up a little bit on my NBA model, so getting both of those worked out, starting to do a little better in both of those, so um, thought we'd start making these longer form shows, but if you do want to see um, some just all the daily picks. I, I have been recording, you know, YouTube shorts that are going up on the channel um, and also over on TikTok and whatnot. So make sure you're following there, checking out those to get the picks. But we are back here for a little bit longer show again today. So let's just jump into some news that we've missed here in the last few days or so. Um, so we're starting out in the MLB or at least the baseball world. We start out in the Atlantic um, League, <laughs> whatever it is for minor league baseball there. They're testing out a few new rules here that I think are pretty interesting. One, um, the big one anyway, I think, well, two big ones here, but one of them is they're moving back the pitching mound at one foot, um, which is doesn't sound like a rule that, you know, we've necessarily, you know, seen league experiment with or whatnot, but I think it is interesting, you know, trying to get more more balls in play and stuff like that, trying to take the advantage, the, the, such the big advantage that the pitchers really have nowadays, um, away from that, getting a little more into the hitting. So um, I don't hate the move. I would love to see, I, I mean, I'd love to see how this is going to work out. I think it's very interesting um, to try to see. And a couple other things that they're doing, automatic strike zones, they've been doing that for a few years, I believe, um, but they are going to continue that. Um, for them there and also the dh which is kind of a wacky rule here so the starting pitcher when the started while the starting pitcher is in the game the dh is in the game but as soon as you pull the starting pitcher out of the game then the pitcher the relievers closers whatever have to start hitting um so it's very interesting it adds like a whole other aspect of the game as far as when do you pull that starting pitcher when you put your dh in, or basically when you're pulling your dh out of the game too so um i think it'll be very interesting to see how that that changes, if it changes at all, when you pull your pitcher um, and whatnot. Obviously, it'll probably change it a little bit. You know, if you have the DHs due up in the next inning, you obviously don't want to want to pull that pitcher. But um, it, it, that one will be a, a very interesting rule change. I'd love to see how those come. Um, and really, I think both these rule changes are just to, to produce more fun baseball, um, which is really lacking in the MLB, to be quite honest. You know, the MLB is a sport that it's hard to get into if you're not constantly watching every game. It's hard to just pick it up and it's also hard to watch every game so um I, it'll be interesting to see what we get there but um enough about the mlb let's take a little bit some college basketball news um i know it's the off season no we don't because the gays for another six months here um but with you know college basketball being my number one gambling focus definitely always working on it and there are a few pieces of news here that i think are very impactful to you know potential outcomes next season one being um gonzaga's timmy lloyd is the new head coach of the arizona wildcats um, at least reportedly. I don't know if it's been officially announced yet or anything, but um, looks like it's all roads lead to him. And I think it's a great pickup for Arizona. Um, you know, a little surprised they moved on from Miller, but but I think Tommy Lloyd here will be a great fit for there. Um, and another team that I loved watching this season that has a little bit of news, Brad Davidson back at Wisconsin for his fifth season, taking advantage of that NCAA rule where no eligibility. Um, and my love for Wisconsin this this past season, um, while irrational at times for sure, I think it's going to continue this year. I think this Wisconsin team is just a few key pieces away from being a really, really good team, a really competitive team, especially in a Big Ten um, that frankly was very overrated this season. So um, love to see what this Wisconsin team brings up next year. And speaking of rule changes, you know, looking at those MLB ones, we do have some in college basketball, some proposed rule changes. Um, one of the more interesting ones that I think um, is the decline of free throws in the last two minutes. Basically, if you're fouled within the last two minutes of the game um, or overtime, you are allowed, you, you'd be able to, instead of shooting the two shots, you'd be able to decline the foul or decline the free throws and instead inbound the basketball, um, which is a very <laughs> interesting strategy. Um, and quite frankly, I, I believe that this was tried in the 90s and it didn't really work out too well. Um, or maybe in the NIT tournament, something like that. But I think that this this doesn't really, you know, trying to speed the end college basketball games is probably the worst part of the entire game. They're so slow. Oftentimes they're so boring. It's a blowout. There's really nothing happening. But they they just keep fouling, keep dragging the game out. Um, and by making it so that it's basically just continuous fouls at the end of the game to try and 
you know, actually shoot the basketball. Not a huge fan of this rule, so we'll have to see um, how that one. But one rule that I am a fan of that looks like it will uh, hopefully here officially being passed um, is the one-time transfer rule. Um, players will be able to transfer one time and not have to wait out a year for el to be eligible to play. So um, very much like that rule. Don't see any reason why they <laughs> shouldn't approve it. I mean, I feel like at this point in time, everybody is good with that rule change. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what any like actual arguments you can make against it. Um, at, you know, coaches can up and leave whenever they want. Why can't players too? So um, like that. Um, and I'd be a little bit. You know, haven't talked here in a while. Got to hit on the Cardinals a little bit. Signing James Conner here the other day. Um, I do like the move at running back especially for like a million bucks or whatever where you're gonna pay them basically nothing um i think i think it's a great move i you know I, I preach all the time not to pay a running back and this is like the definition of not paying a running back you know get rid of Kenyon drake bring in james connor um honestly i think that james connor is very comparable i think he he can get the just as much production if not more um Granted, if he stays healthy, that's obviously the biggest key, but that's also the biggest key for anyone staying healthy. So um, this team's honestly on paper looking unbelievable. Really, the only major loss that hasn't been filled this season is Pat Pete going to Minnesota. But that almost means that we're taking a corner in the, the first round of the draft. Um, and obviously, the Larry Fitzgerald question mark still up in the air. Um, obviously, I would love to see him come back um, based on the background of the video here. Um but I do understand if it's if it's time for him to try, retire. But it would be nice to see him give it one more season. But um, that's enough for some sports news. The reason you're all here is to hear today's pick. So let's get into some MLB action for today. Starting off in the NL East with some early action. Got the Marlins taken on the Braves. Marlins are starting Trevor Rogers here in this game on the mound for them. Um, Braves star Ian Anderson. Trevor Rogers has had a pretty good start to the season. Um, only 1.8. E, uh, earned runs this uh, earned run ERA this season. Gosh, I can't <laughs> can't talk right now. Um, and he's actually done a really good job against the this current Braves roster. You know, twenty uh, nine point two strikeout percentage for him, which is a very high percentage when it um, you know when it comes to striking <laughs> to striking that many players out for the opposing team here. Um, Ian Anderson not having quite the same start to the season here. Four point three five ERA for him on the season, and only a twenty four point six percent strike. Um, strikeout percentage for the Marlins or against this Marlins roster here. Um, and as far as offense goes for this Marlins team, do a good job scoring runs, 4.3 runs per game. You know, the Braves not too far behind them at 4.27 runs per game. Um, but this Marlins team just does a really good job hitting the baseball. Two, uh, 238 batting average for them coming into this game. The Braves a 215 batting average. Um, but it doesn't really stop there for the Marlins. Marlins also do a good job just getting on base in general. 313 on base percentage for them. Braves a 283. Um, Marlins also good in when it comes to slugging. 412 slugging percentage for them. And the Braves a 375 slugging percentage. Um, and this Marlins team is honestly just very fun to watch. Um, the Braves, while I was on them on the, at the beginning of the season, um, I thought they had a chance to win the World Series. This Braves team just so far this season um, hasn't necessarily lived up to the hype. Granted, we're like, what, 10, 15 games into the season. Um, it obviously doesn't matter. Ronald Cunha, you know, is had an on, is just on fire. Um, even when the rest of the Braves aren't, you know, um, having himself, a um, a, a, definitely maybe an MVP season, be trying to, you know, prove that he is the new face of baseball, um, and doing a dang good job at that. But the Marlins here at plus 168, I think that's a really good value. Hard to pass that value up. Um, especially with this pitching matchup. So really like the Marlins in this one, plus the 168. Next game on the card, it's actually the first game of a doubleheader. We got the Orioles taking on the Mariners. Yesterday's game was canceled, so they'll play on the doubleheader today. But this game, um, just on the first one um, here of the doubleheader, we got Matt Harvey of the Orioles taking on Justin Dune of the Mariners. Um, now, Matt Harvey is, you know, not what he used to, <laughs> to be by any means. He's not the the prospect of the Mets had that, you know, um, had Tommy John surgery and, you know, all everything that that followed after that. But um, but he's still a good pitcher, I, I do believe. You know, Justin Dune comes into this game 5.79 ERA for him on the season. Matt Harvey a 5.59 ERA. So very comparable um, players in that respect. And both these teams do do a good job scoring runs, you know. Orioles 4.55 runs per game, Marlins, Mariners, sorry, I keep saying Marlins, 4.65, <laughs> God, I can't talk, 4.64 runs per game for the Mariners, um, but one thing that Matt Harvey is really good at um, 
is just not letting opposing players get hits, and especially against this Mariners team. Um, when he's pitched against this Mariners roster, only allowed a point or a 143 batting average against them. Um, Justin Dune, on the other hand, can't really say the same going up against this Orioles team. 373 or 273 uh, batting average against this Orioles roster. Um, and the Mariners, while they aren't a bad team by any means, have struggled a little bit. Um, only 7.55 hits per game for them. The Orioles doing a little bit better job of getting hits, 7.73. Orioles also pretty good batting average here and just a good job getting on base. 227 um, batting average for them and an on-base percentage of 295. Mariners um, slightly better in both those categories, sure, at 232 batting average for them and an on-base percentage of 309. Um, but I do really like the Orioles here um, at home. You know, slight favorites here, not too big, only minus 104, but I really like this Orioles team. I think they get it done here in this one with Matt Harvey on the mound. So like the Orioles, minus 104. And the final game on the card, we got the Rockies taking on the Dodgers. Um, now, it, late game here, pretty big, sp uh, not spread, pretty big line anyway. Um, well, this Rockies team is by no means great. You know, <laughs> Austin Gober comes into this game with a 2.89 ERA, which is pretty dang good on the season. Um, Julio Adorado, or Uratis, um has a pretty good ERA himself at 284, um, but I I really like this Rockies team. I think this is really good value. Um, both these teams have done a decent job this season scoring runs. Dodgers 5.82 runs per game this season. Rockies 4.39 runs per game. So while they are slightly below that, um, that does you know obviously factor in a little bit here with the with the um, the price we're getting on this team. Um, the Rockies also do a good job just not striking out, only strike out on 20.3% of their at-bats. Um, Dodgers, on the other hand, 23.8, so slightly worse off there. Um, the Dodgers, on the other hand, though, do have a a better batting average, you know, 285 batting average for the Dodgers coming into this game. Um, Rockies can't quite say the same at 219, um, but I think this value on this Dodgers team not this Dodgers team, this Rockies team, man, I'm a little rusty from doing these, can't talk today, but this value on this Rockies team at too good at plus 270, so like the Rockies here um, to get that one done and to close out today's card, and that about wraps it up for the show, um, thanks for watching guys, I really do appreciate it, I hope to get some more shows coming out for the MLB season here, NBA, I'm not a huge NHL guy, but hey, if you want NHL picks, maybe I'll look into it. Um, probably not. But if you do want NHL picks, head over to the Hot Tip Bets website at hottipbets.com. Um, you can check out NHL picks, MLB picks, NBA picks, horse racing picks up every day from the Hot Tip Bets computer model. Um, so you can see what all that, as well as the results for all those picks, plus all the picks given out here on the show. If you're not following me on Twitter and Instagram, make sure you follow me at Hot Tip Bets Chris. All follow me on BetStamp at Hot Tip Bets Chris to get up to the minute. Um, reports on what I am betting on. You get early access before any of these shows. Also, follow the Hot Tip Bits main account on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, and here on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below, like this video, and I will see you guys tomorrow.